What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy, and today we're back with another PTCGO deck and battle for you guys. And today we're taking a look at Jolteon EX, Glaceon EX with Ninja Boy. So, uh, now that Ninja Boy has finally been fixed on PTCGO, there was a bug in it for a while, and you couldn't play with it, so now that it's finally able to be used, we, we can make a deck or two out of it, and uh, you know, see if we can come up with some cool stuff. So we're taking a look at, like I said, Jolteon EX and Glaceon. We have a couple other tricks in here, but those guys are going to be the main stars of the show here. So if you're unfamiliar with Jolteon EX, it has the flash ray attack. It does 70 damage, but during your opponent's next turn, you prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by basic Pokemon. So this is really big because take a deck like uh, Darkrai, for example, or Volcanion. They pretty much only play basic Pokemon, so you can pretty much lock your opponent out of the game unless they have a Pokemon Ranger every time they want to attack Jolteon, which uh, can be a lot to ask for. So Jolteon is a really, really good wall against a lot of different decks currently in the format. And it's also nice because you can clean up knockouts and uh, you know finish cleaning up games on Shamans in the late game, since Flash Ray does knock out Shamans in one hit as well. So uh, Jolteon does wall against basic Pokemon, but we also play the, the Glaceon to counter some other stuff here too. So Glaceon has the attack Crystal Ray, so pretty much the same type of thing as Jolteon, does 70 damage, but it blocks your damage from evolution Pokemon, so against maybe stuff like Greninja or even like Mega Evolution decks, it pretty much locks your opponent out of the game unless they have an alternate uh, type of attacker or, like I said, can Pokemon Ranger every time they want to actually attack you. Um, and Glaceon actually has a pretty decent weakness, it's weak to steal. Sizor is starting to see a little bit of play, uh, but even still, I don't think it's the most popular deck. So it, I think Glaceon has a decent weakness, and so does Jolteon as well. Jolteon is weak to fighting. Um, to be honest, I don't expect to see Zygarde to be a very dominant deck at regionals or in the standard format anytime soon. So it definitely has a decent weakness and free retreat, which is really nice too. So the other attack we're going to play here is going to be Regice. So Regice has the Resistance Blizzard attack. It does 70 damage, just like this Jolteon and Glaceon. But during your opponent's next turn, you prevent all effects of attacks, including damage, done to Regice by Pokemon EX. So again, it's just a different type of wall. But the most important thing about Regice, it prevents effects of attacks in addition to damage. So why is this important? Well, if you're playing against a... Mega Sizor, for example, and you have a double colorless energy attached to your Regice, uh, Mega Sizor can't discard the double colorless. Or if you're playing against Mega Mewtwo, which I think is the really important one here, uh, Mega Mewtwo typically relies on the damage change attack. So it, it normally moves damage off Mega Mewtwo onto Regice or whoever they're attacking. But here you actually prevent that from being done to Regice. So that's a very important thing here. Um, I've actually debated on going up in the Regice count and, and subtracting either a Jolteon or Glaceon. Um, Regice has definitely proven to be really good in a lot of different matchups. So then we're also going to play one Mew. So Mew has the ability Memories of Dawn. It can use the attacks of any of your basic Pokemon in play. So why would you want to do that? Well, um, I think the most obvious one is you hit Mega Mewtwo for weakness. So uh, I think a problem with this Jolteon, Glaceon type of idea is that you take three hit knockouts, which is kind of gross, to be honest. Uh, so especially if you're going against Mega Mewtwo, they're going to be healing off damage here and there. So it might be actually hard to complete certain games, which isn't good in a tournament setting, of course. So Mew's kind of cool because if they whiff a turn of using uh, Shrine of Memories to heal the damage off Mewtwo, uh, you can use Mew to attack and clean up knockouts on Mewtwo's pretty easily. But also too, it's nice to be able to actually use all of these different attacks just with Mew. If you have, um, since we play Water and Lightning Energy, if you have some combination of those two on Mew, uh, you can have the option to attack with your Jolteon, your Glaceon, or your Regice, and, and you only need one attacker powered up. And, and Mew is also a non-EX, so especially if you have a matchup where attacking with Jolteon is kind of advantageous, maybe you should power up your Mew instead because it you can use the same attacks and it only gives up one prize. So 
And Muse is also cool because if you start with it, you have free retreat. So it's just a really good card. I, I really like it in this deck a lot. And then just to round out the Pokemon line, we have two Shaman EX. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory for the ability setup. So when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you can draw until you have six cards in hand. That's the main reason we are playing this. Uh, and it also is worth noting, since we are playing Ninja Boy in this list, uh, we can uh, replace our Shamans with um, less easy targets on our bench, potentially. Okay, so that's going to be it for the Pokemon line. Going on to the supporters, we're going to play four Sycamore, discard your hand, draw seven. Best draw supporter in the game, so we're going to max that guy out in this list. Uh, especially, too, since uh, a lot of times I like six draw supporters in decks that run two Shaman. That typically is kind of the sweet spot I found. But in this deck, there's going to be instances where you don't like to bench Shaman just because you don't want easy prizes. You want to kind of lock your opponent out of the game if possible. So I like running an extra draw supporter just in case uh, to, to maybe help prevent us from having to bench Shaman to draw cards at some point. So then we also play 3N. That's our other main form of draw support. So each player shuffles their hand into their deck and draws equal to the amount of prize cards they have left good in the early turns, and you can use it as a form of disruption in the late game, too. Two Lysander. So this is definitely an important card. Like I said, this deck takes three hit knockouts in a lot of cases, which is much less than ideal. <laughs> so it lets you switch your opponent's bench Pokemon with one of their with their active. So like I said, we take three hit knockouts, so we're definitely going to have to Lysander stuff up at some point in order to clean up knockouts. So that's why we're running two of this guy. Uh, one Pokemon Ranger, remove all effects of attacks on each player and their Pokemon. So if we go against an opposing deck that plays, let's say, Jolteon EX, um, that's actually really bad for us too because all of our attackers are basics. So we want to be able to have an out against that if we run into it at some point. Okay, uh, one Hex Maniac. So it shuts off abilities for each player until the end of your opponent's next turn. So this is kind of good against Greninja, also good against, just in general, a lot of stuff. If you go first against like a Mega Rayquaza deck, uh, a Hex Maniac on the first turn can be really devastating for them. So just an all-around a good card, Ability Lock is uh, never a bad thing, usually. And then to round out our supporters, we have one Ninja Boy. So this is kind of what makes this set kind of cool. So you choose one of your basic Pokemon and, and play, and you replace it with a different one in your deck. Uh, any special conditions, damage, uh, effects on it, etc., stay on that Pokemon. You're basically just swapping out the card. So this is really cool because let's say we're attacking with our Jolteon and our opponent has an evolution card. Well, we can play Ninja Boy and just swap our Jolteon with a Glaceon and keep attacking. Uh, that way we don't have to actually power up another card if possible. Uh, like I said, also too, if we do have to bench our Shamans to draw cards, we can always just play Ninja Boy to get them off the field and maybe put down like another Jolteon or a Mew or you know something that isn't an easy free two prizes. So uh, we're just playing one of these guys. I have played two at some point in this list as well. I like both. Um, if you do want to try out this deck, try both. But uh, right now I'm just doing the one copy of Ninja Boy currently. So going into our item cards, we have four versus Seeker just to reuse all those supporters that we just talked about. For Ultra Ball, discard two cards from your hand, search your deck for a Pokemon. So, just a good general search card. For Trainer's Mail, you get to look at the top four cards of your deck and you get an item card. So, we play, I'm sorry, a trainer card. We play a ton of trainer cards in this deck. Um, trainer's Mail is really good in case we have to dig for max elixirs to power up attackers more quickly. So, definitely want to max this guy out just to increase our consistency. Uh, for Max Elixir, like I just said, look at the top six cards of your deck and attach a basic energy you find there to a basic Pokemon on your bench. So it's not uncommon with this deck a lot of times to actually have an attacker power up right on the first turn of the game because you can attach a double colorless energy and use a Max Elixir and be ready to go. Okay, we also have one Escape Rope. So each player switches their active Pokemon with one of their bench Pokemon. Your opponent switches first. So it's just kind of a little bit of a disruption card, especially if we go against another deck that plays something like a Jolteon or a Regice. Uh, we can place Escape Rope to get that out of the active spot and clear the lock. So it's another way we can do that. Uh, one Super Ride. So you shuffle three basic energy or Pokemon from your discard into your deck. So 
if our main wall gets knocked out and we have another prize or something like that, it just helps us reuse uh, the Pokemon that we want at all times. And especially if we have to discard some energy early on that we don't want to, we can always super autumn them back into the deck and increase our odds of hitting energy off Max Elixir too. So then we have two Floatstone, uh, gives free retreat to whoever the tool is attached to. So we can attach it to our Glaceons, Regice, Shaman, um, just to give them free, free retreat if we want to. But then we also have Fighting Fury Belt. So you attach it to a basic Pokemon. They get 40 more hit points and do 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So this just helps us tank a little better. It gives Jolteon 200 hit points, Glaceon 210, gives Regice 160. So just helps buff our Pokemon a little bit more and helps them tank more. Okay, then for our Stadium cards, we are playing two Rough Seas. So once during each player's turn, that player may heal 30 damage from their Water and Lightning Pokemon. So all, all of our attackers are Water and Lightning, so we can, like I said, with this and Fighting Fury Belt, we can tank hits and uh, make our Pokemon uh, survive a little bit longer, if our opponent is able to even uh, hit them. <clears throat> and then to round out our trainer cards, we're playing one Parallel City. So Parallel City is one of these cool um, dual effect cards. So it has two different uses depending on which way you play it down in play. So if you play it the standard way, like it looks here, um, it puts your opponent down to three bench Pokemon, and it makes that, um, unfortunately, any damage done by water Pokemon, fire, or grass Pokemon is reduced by 20 on my side. So if we want to put our opponent down at a lower bench size, we will have to do less damage uh, with our Glaceons and Regice. But I actually like Perilous City to actually play down the reverse way onto ourselves. So let's say we want to have an early uh, aggress or aggressive early game by playing several Shamans down and benching a lot of extra stuff that our opponent can potentially just lie Sander up to win that way. Peril City is cool because we can play down on ourselves and discard these extra Pokemon that we don't really need that might give up easy prizes for our opponent. So that's why we're just playing one of that. Okay, and just to round out the deck list, we have four DCE, uh, five lightning, and five water. So that probably seems like a lot of energy, but we're only playing, I think 10 basic energy is kind of the sweet spot for max elixir. Uh, and we do want to play DCE too, just because all of our attackers use DCE. So uh, I feel like we will always have energy in this deck. We will pretty much be guaranteed an energy off max looks for most of the time and we will have a DCE to finish powering up our attackers. So yeah guys that's the list that we're going to try out. I'm going to switch over to the battle video now that way you can see how this deck looks in action okay. All right guys so it looks like we found ourselves a game and looks like our opponent has some dragon energies and a dark ride deck box so if I had to guess we might be playing into a dark ride Giratina deck. Uh, I feel like it's a safe assumption we'll see though. Unfortunately, we do start with Shaman, which is definitely less than ideal. Um, well, this is interesting. So we could Ninja Boy, but then we don't have anything to attach to that Pokemon. But we can't Sycamore, I don't think, because that's a lot of resources. So yeah, here I'm just playing the N. I think that is a good move. Uh, still not the best hand, so let's see if we can get off this Trainer's Mail. Okay, an Ultra Wall, that will actually work just fine. Uh, that will let us get out uh, Jolteon and start powering that up. So Ultra Ball, we'll get rid of probably Lysander, and I'm guessing Mew. I think that's probably the safest thing here. Because a lot of these Darkrai Giratina decks play Garbodor, and I don't know which version this is, but here we can just get rid of the Mew, get it back with Super Odd later if we do want to. But here we're just going to start powering up that Jolteon. we got a Fury Belt and a, a Lightning on it, so next turn we should potentially be able to attack with it. If we can draw into like a Double Carlos and a Float Stone. Or maybe like a double Carlos and two Max Elixirs. Okay, so we see an attachment from our opponent. Oh, and just a pass. So, okay, we definitely don't want to use this N, uh, a versus Seeker to use N. So we're definitely just going to Sycamore here. And, okay, we can potentially attack here. If we can attack, get two Max Elixirs. Ah, oh, man, the first one failed. So that's definitely not good. Um... But here it looks like so I'm debating on playing the second Max Elixir, but I don't know if there's a need to just because we'll be able to attach DCE 
uh, on the next turn since we just used sky return. And here uh, he is starting to threaten a chaos wheel so if we can get our rough seas down that would be great just to get that in play before he locks our our abilities. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, locks our stadium cards. Okay, so here, what do we do? So we get rid of maybe a lightning energy since we have reg ice in hand. Uh, seems okay to me. So it looks like we are going to have to grab shaman just because we don't have any other way to draw cards this turn. But we do run ninja boys, so we can hopefully just. Um, replace it on our bench at some point. So we're going to set up, draw four cards, and okay cool we actually draw the Ninja Boy and we have a uh, Flintstone to get down on Reg Ice before uh, we see a Chaos Wheel happen to. So it's actually a really good turn for us. So we have two Jolteons in play, have a Reg Ice that's going to be powered up. Oh and I actually forgot to attach the Floatstone here that's, that's pretty bad. I think I got distracted using Ninja Boy got to attach that so that's kind of gross actually just because it's gonna be hard to retreat this guy uh, so let's see what we can make happen here uh, hopefully it doesn't come back to bite us here so it looks like he's gonna grab a Hoopa EX uh, seems good he can grab himself maybe a Darkrai or two and a, and a Shaman something like that yep so that seems good two Darkrai and a Shaman and our opponent really needs a Fighting Fury Belt here, otherwise this this Giratina is just going to get knocked out by this Jolteon. Uh, nope, uh, but we see a Flood Zone, so that's pretty good news for us. That means we will be able to knock it out. Oh, and he does play Garbodor, so that's... Uh, I'm glad I discarded the Mew. Oh, here's going to Lysander our Regice. That's not fun at all. <laughs> Okay, uh, but here we had a bit of a problem. We could have attached the... Why didn't I attach the DCE looking back on this video? <laughs> I did record this in like the middle of the night, so I don't know if I was tired or what, but yeah, I think we could have just attached the DCE and retreated to our, our Jolteon. So, definitely a misplay for me. Sorry if I'm playing a little scrubby in this game, guys. <laughs> So our opponent does get out a Garboder. Um, to be honest, even if our opponent knocks out this Regice, I'm not too worried about it, to be honest. Uh, Regice is definitely good, but he doesn't really have any effects of attacks that hit us anyway, so Jolteon is probably just the better attacker here. And it has free retreat as well, so that's good. So here we can attach a DCE since our opponent didn't use Chaos Wheel on the previous turn. Okay, so we can Super Rod, get back that Reg Ice, couple energy. So we can probably get down a Fury Belt on our other Jolteon if I had to guess. Uh, that would seem pretty decent to me, just in case our opponent gets a bunch of energy and knocks out, um, potentially Lysanders it up and knocks it out. So here we're going to grab a Versus Seeker. So I think my plan of attack here is to Lysander the uh, Giratina the next turn, but that would leave us without a draw supporter for the following turn. So I grab the Versus Seeker in preparation for that. But here, uh, Darkrai does 20 damage plus 20 more for every Dark on the field, but he has a scary amount of energy now. Um, and us not taking out that Giratina is kind of coming back to bite me a little bit here. Um, not retreating that Reg Ice or not attaching that Floatstone when we have the chance. But here, our opponent actually is 10 damage short of knocking us out. That's pretty big, actually. So we're going to use Verse Seeker to get Lysander, pull up that Giratina. That has the bulk of our opponent's energy in play, so which means Darkrai will be doing significantly less damage now. Uh, downside is, if our opponent does have another Lysander, this Jolteon on the bench is going to go down. So what does our opponent have to work with here? Um, I'm going to start powering up that other Darkrai. That seems just fine to me. Uh, he definitely needs a couple max elixirs here if he wants to... Well, he needs a lot of stuff to be honest, okay? So he does have a Lysander for next turn. Um, so we do know that. So we do have a Versus Seeker. We can potentially end that out of our opponent's hand. That might be what we have to do here. 
So we have a trainer's mail. Um, see if we can get there. So we got a rough seas. That's actually really nice. We can start healing off this Jolteon uh, and start getting it down to uh, getting out of one shot range. So here it looks like I'm probably just going to grab that M. We want to get that Ice Tear out of our opponent's hand. But here I actually I almost end, but I. I kind of thought of a, a little bit of a risky play, but it might pay off here. If we power up this other Jolteon and attack with it, our opponent, even if they have a Lysander, can't take a knockout. So if this damaged Jolteon is the one that can't be attacked or affected by damage, that might be the better route to go here. So it looks like that is what I'm opting to do. We're going to use Flash right here, so it's going to force our, po or our opponent to have a Pokemon Ranger. So I feel like there's less of a chance of him having a Ranger than a Lysander. So that's why we're opting to go for this one. Okay, so that's a Max Elixir, not a Pokemon Ranger. I am fine with that. Okay, um, he does have another Dark Ride that is working on being powered up, so... Um, oh, Escape Rope. Does he have the Lysander with it? That would be... That would be pretty uh, dirty. <laughs> But here we're just going to see a Dark Pulse for 100, so I'm okay with that, actually. So we're going to use Rough Seas, definitely want to heal away some of this damage. Um, we can probably... Maybe we can play this Righteous. I don't think we're in any danger of it. Our opponent can't win by knocking out just these bench Pokemon, so no, no danger in really benching it. Okay, um... We can play this Max Elixir. Cool, we do get a, another Water Energy on this Regi, so we will have that as a backup attacker as well. But here, we're just going to do uh, Flash Ray for 70, or I'm sorry, for 80. In hindsight, maybe we should have, again, thrown out the damaged one. Yeah, that might have been better, actually. Um, yeah, we would have prevented a, knock, a knockout, so it's probably one of the sloppiest games I've played on PTC Geo for you guys in a while. <laughs> Um, so, again, my apologies on that one. But even still, we're not in a really bad spot because we can Lysander up this Darkrai that's on the bench and take a knockout on that. And then we'll just have one more knockout to take. And I think it's going to be kind of hard, honestly, for our opponent to clean up this game. Okay, so we can attach a water, finish powering up that Red Ice. And we're just going to do Flash Ray for the knockout. Okay, um, so yeah, I mean, even if our opponent can attack this Regice or this Jolteon, he's only doing 60 damage, which isn't much of a threat. So, I mean, he's grabbing an Ultra Ball. I don't know what he could really play here. If he plays Hydreigon, uh, Hydreigon EX, that could potentially be an out to taking down uh, these Jolteons and Regice, since Hydreigon EX can actually hit through any effects in play. But it looks like just a Garbodor, so I'm feeling pretty good about that, to be honest. So we're going to see a Floatstone, shut off abilities, and play a Sycamore. But I'm really not too worried about the Garbodor. Uh, no reason to play down any Shamans at this point. Uh, we have two attackers pretty much fully set up here. Um, I don't see too much of a need for it, like I said. So, okay, he's going to get a foot zone on Koopa. Not too relevant, but... So, yeah, he's just going to attack for zero, so I like that. And here, I really don't know what we could do. We could play N, but at this point, I think just not playing N would be better, since that would put so many cards back into our deck. Okay, so here we're going to flash rate for another 80. So what does our opponent do here? He really needs to um, get some sort of different attacker going on. And I don't know. I, I really don't know what he has to work with uh, at this point in the game. Because even if he has a Pokemon Ranger and knocks out this Jolteon somehow, Okay, so he's just going to lie center on to this Regice, but I'm perfectly fine with that because we can just put up Jolteon and win. Okay, so here, like I said, we're going to put up this Jolteon, and then we can just flash ray for the game, which seems pretty good to me. <laughs> so, 
yeah, like I said, my apologies definitely for uh, the sloppy playing in this video, guys. Um, but even still, you can see how, even with these like random misplays here and there that, that I was doing, that this lock from Jolteon was so powerful that it, it didn't make too much of a difference here. Imagine if um, my, pl my playing was a little bit cleaner here. Uh, we put, may have even 6-0'd, who knows. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I definitely like this deck. Uh, it's kind of cool. The Ninja Boy makes it fun to play with. You can kind of out of nowhere catch your opponent off guard if they have an answer to your lock that you have. You can just Ninja Boy, put up somebody else, and uh, yeah, it's pretty frustrating for him, I think. <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, despite my uh, notably poor playing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, I really like this deck. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As usual, feel free to like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our merch over at RareCandyTCG.com. There's actually a couple items on sale right now, so definitely check that out. It'd mean a lot if you could pick something up and help support the channel. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you watching, and we will see you for the next one, okay?